sponsored by ABMP. I want to tell you about the ABMP Education Center. You can learn more at abmp.com slash learn. But what you're going to see there is over 600 hours of continuing education courses included with your ABMP membership or available at a really affordable price for non-members. Topics include hands-on techniques, ethics, self-care, cultural competency, and a whole batch of courses for massage educators. ABMP members get free CE for all courses, including included with our level of membership, a great way to meet CE requirements, Oh, words are hard this morning. Try out new presenters and save your CE bucks for other in-person courses after you vetted an instructor online. I am delighted that to tell you that we also have courses in the ABMP Education Center. You can learn more at abmp.com slash learn. <music> Hey everyone, welcome to the Massage Business Blueprint Podcast, where we help you attract more clients, make more money, and improve your quality of life. I'm Michael Reynolds this morning with a scratchy uh, voice. I am Alyssa Haynes, jumping in a little too early. <laughs> That's okay, you didn't know that I was going to say I was, had a scratchy voice. But yeah, I'm feeling like the changing weather has got my voice all scratchy and weird today. So sorry about that, folks, but I'm here. I'm functional. Everybody in my house had like the whole sore throat, runny nose, had to take everybody for PCR tests, but nobody had COVID or strep or flu. It was just, you know, the gunk just coming all. around. <laughs> just <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Indeed. All right. Where are we reading? starting? <laughs> I'm, so I'm reading and listening to a few things. So many so that I wanted to tell you about both. One, I may have mentioned before, um, I... Uh, when I had my brief little go on TikTok, I followed a woman who was super awesome, Casey Davis. She's a therapist. Uh, she's also a woman who has ADHD and uh, really helps people conquer care tasks, uh, taking caring for your family, caring for yourself. And she's got some uh, great instructionals and just some great advice. And she's so human and lovely. And she finally launched her new podcast called The Struggle Care Podcast. I have the link uh, in the show notes. You can also just Google Struggle Care Podcast. I'd also encourage you to get on her, on her email list. It's not obnoxious. She doesn't send you a lot of emails. And um, I bought, she has these like, uh, PDF downloadable things, guides, lists, things like that, that you can uh, buy and download really, really affordable. Like I got like the family house package or something and it was like 12 bucks or something. And it gave me um, some guides and some lists on like how to keep up with care tasks in the home. And it's very much like, you know, here's how to organize your domestic labor, but in a way that is very friendly to people who are not good with organizing or structure. So, um, oh, you know what? I have talked about her before because she has a, a book called How to Keep House While Drowning um, that is really, really helpful. So anyhow, Struggle Care Podcast. Uh, she's got a first few episodes out now and they're really, really good. Um, and then the second thing is a beautiful piece of fiction called The 10,000 Doors of January by Alex E. Harrow. And I, I got it through the library Kindle download, so for free. I also put a link to uh, the bookshop link to it if you're into buying books. And it is just a beautiful piece of fiction. Uh, I don't want to go too much into it because I've already taken up a lot of time here, but it is, um, it is a young woman who... Uh, discovers her role in a mystical situation um just it's just beautiful it's a really good piece of fiction and uh i am delighted to recommend it to you and if you've read it i want to hear your thoughts on it uh i think alex ihero has another book too but i have a couple other books but i haven't done the work yet if you've read any of other any of alex ihero's other books i'd love to hear what you thought about them that's what I've been doing. And I got to say, Michael, when I looked at my podcast feed yesterday, I saw what you're going to talk about. And I went, I Michael's going to talk about this, but I didn't have time <laughs> to listen to it myself yet. So uh, tell us what you're telling us. Yeah. So I figured you would, uh, you would see that coming. So Life Kit is one of the podcasts we've talked about before on this show. It's from NPR. 
And uh, I think I mentioned it last week as well. Uh, you know, there's different episodes. Some are hit or miss. Uh, the last couple I've really liked and this one I really liked. And it's called How to Start Professional Networking and Feel Good About It. So I thought our audience would appreciate this one because it kind of just frames it as, hey, you know, we're, not all of us are great at networking. We don't always get it. But here are some ways you can think about networking differently. Think about networking in a way that uh, helps your business slash career. Um, if you're maybe introverted, not comfortable with networking, it's just a really good, comfortable, friendly walkthrough of what networking is all about. And I like that it's someone other than me talking about networking, <laughs> which we need. So, so I would say if you're interested at all in getting better at networking or just um, feeling good about networking overall for your massage practice, this is probably a good one to listen to. It was very approachable, very friendly, and had some good networking tips as well. NPR's Life Kit. Sweet. Yeah. Um, good morning. Right back to Andrew. Thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, Michael, can you talk about your conversation with Andrew the other day or is it top secret for now? I don't think it's top secret. So yeah, Andrew uh, invited me to his show, which is Wellness Wednesday. He's got a podcast where he speaks to uh, not only wellness practitioners, including massage therapists, but kind of the general public about health and business and money topics. And so Andrew was kind enough to invite me on his show. And uh, I think it will air later this month. And uh, again, it's called, uh, I believe it's called Wellness Wednesday. And we talked about uh, some money stuff, you know, business numbers, uh, took a little bit of uh, inspiration from our latest ABMP column and just kind of covered a variety of money and business topics. So uh, thank you, Andrew, for inviting me on the show. And when it's published, we will be sure and share it to our audience as well. Yeah, thanks for covering that, Michael. And um, yeah. I'm excited to hear it. I like it when yeah. you do things uh, without me because then I get to be surprised by them. Um, and also, uh, you know, thank you for covering that because my schedule did not allow me to participate. Right on. All right. What's next? Our friends at the original Jojoba Company. Oh, oh yay. You just, you know, y'all know how I feel about the original Jojoba Company. I think they were one of our first sponsors and they are probably our longest sponsor and I use the product. I love the product. And I do so because they're the only company in the world that carries 100% pure first press quality jojoba. It doesn't go rancid. There's no triglycerides, so it's not going to get yucky. And side note, I'm going to vamp here. Um, I have taken most social media off of my phone, except now that I'm now I'm reading a lot of Reddit. And I've been in the Reddit massage. Uh, I don't know what it's called. Forum community. I don't know. Um, yeah. Uh, hell hole. So uh, no, it's actually really good. Um, and somebody the other day was like, my sheets are all gross and rancid. And oh, so I'm, I'm reading Reddit, but I'm trying to not answer questions on Reddit. Um, because uh, then everyone will know who I am, because I sound the same. I was ready to jump into my like, you should get jojoba because da, 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 da. And um, then I was like, calm down. So uh, I didn't reply. But if you're on massage Reddit, you should tell this person that they should use jojoba. Anyhow, jojoba is not allergenic. So I can use it on any client and every client without worrying about an allergic reaction. And as a matter of fact, I have three different clients with nut allergies this week. Like I looked at my week on Sunday night and I was like, whoa, Nelly, refill the jojoba. Except I didn't because jojoba lasts a super long time because you use so little. Um, so yeah, and it doesn't stain your 100% cotton sheets. So you should just get some. Just trust me, get some. 20% off the price of the product when you shop through our link, massagebusinessblueprint.com slash jojoba. Every time I hear you talk about jojoba, I get excited about it all over again. I know. I used it on my dog the other day, too. So that was nice. I couldn't get one of his little crusty eye gunkers off. So I put some yeah. jojoba on a tissue and I rubbed at it and it came right off. Wow. Um, number 867 for jojoba. <laughs> all right. They have like a whole section of the blog, of the jojoba <laughs> blog, I think, on like pet care and stuff. So <laughs> whatever. I just keep it in the kitchen now. Um, all right, Alyssa. What do you do when your schedule is suddenly empty? Okay. So let me just say this. My office mate does not listen to my podcast. So, um, and I didn't warn her that I was like, I'm going to use our conversation to do a podcast episode. But I have this same conversation with, you know, 10 people a year um, where someone says, God, I just looked at my schedule for the next couple of weeks and it's so empty. It's so empty. All of a sudden, I'm just like, I only have four clients this week. And 
the situation I'm addressing here is not the like on Sunday night, you have 15 people scheduled, but by Tuesday, five of them have canceled because of COVID or, or flu. That's not what we're talking about. I'm talking about when you look at your schedule and you notice that the next four weeks is considerably slower than the last four weeks. That, not the emergency cancellations, which it's a whole other world for us now with like last minute cancellations in this COVID situation. So um, that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm talking about when you can see a trend, when you can see it happening, when it's like a slow motion train wreck situation. Um, and this is happening to a lot of people in the last month. Um, and it's happening to people in all industries. We are probably at the point of what will be declared an official recession. Uh, we have had massive inflation in the last year or so. And so consumers are pacing themselves. This is a normal thing. I would say it's even a healthy thing financially. Like it, if we were to advise people on what to do when a recession is imminent, building your savings is one of those things. Cutting out, I'm air quoting this people, luxuries, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, so it is not surprising that less regular clients might be spacing more time be between their appointments or might just stop scheduling for a while. We did a whole episode on like how to, again, air quote, recession proof your business. If this is a concern for you, I would go back and listen to that. I don't have the episode number at the moment. I apologize. I'll have it before we wrap up this podcast. Um, but uh, this is happening. It's even happening like I have an artist client who opened a show at a gallery and she normally sells a few pieces right away. And she was like, nobody's selling and the gallery, the gallery director's like, nobody's selling anything, nobody's buying anything. That's just how it is right now. Um, so this is happening. So my suggestions for handling this uh, are all things you've heard me talk about before, but I wanted to put them into a little cohesive package. So if you've noticed your schedule is suddenly empty, look at the last six months and physically with a legal pad, make a note uh, make a list of people who have dropped off, who you saw, have seen in the past, and who just, for whatever reason, dropped off your schedule. Canceled because their kid was sick and never rescheduled. Out of that list of all the people who dropped off within the last six months, personally contact anyone you want back and see what that means to you. So like for me, I email my clients. I have been doing this for 18 years. When I started my business, email was like almost a new form of communication for businesses. So I email clients. There's like five clients who I would text because they don't email and I know they don't email. But um, however you typically communicate with your clients in a one-to-one -one way, that is the medium you should use. So what do you say? I can tell you that my emails say something like this. Hey, I haven't seen you in a while and I hope you're doing well. In case you're ready to come back for a massage soon, I've opened up some more space on my schedule. Now, you technically, like, I didn't open up the space, just the lack of clients in general opened the space, but let's just roll with this because I don't want to sound desperate and say my schedule is terrifyingly slow. You don't want to say that. So anyhow. I've opened up some more space on my schedule. I'll be sharing this with my full client list later in the week. So you've got a few days head start to make an appointment time that works best for you. If you're ready, feel free to book online here. And then I give a link to my scheduling system. So I might mix that verbiage up a little bit depending on the person. I might try to open with something a little bit more personal like, hey, I haven't seen you in a while. You had to cancel your last appointment because your grandson was born that week. Um, I hope you're doing well. Send me a picture of him. If you're ready to schedule, here's the link. Either way, let me know how you're doing. So whatever the vibe is with that client, do it. Just do it. Just reach out. If you reach out to half the people on that list who have dropped off, a couple of them are going to book. It just hasn't stayed on their radar. Then after you do that, give it a couple of days and send a bulk email or text, again, whichever you typically do, whichever medium you use to, on a large scale, communicate with your clients. Post on social. I say do this weekly. If you have open appointments, let's say you work like Tuesday through Saturday. If you have open appointments, you should be posting them Monday morning. 
host them like Monday morning and say, I've got a few open appointments this week, you know, click here to schedule. Um, if you use social, then do that. So like if you have a business set up on, on social, do that. Okay, now I'm actually going to flip my notes around. I have this theory of how you choose to work the hours that you work in your business. So let's just say I know that I want to see 20 clients a week. I want 20 clients on my schedule every week, 20 appointments. I know that, just assume, because we're rough numbering here, uh, that's about 20 hours of massage and uh, there's time between appointments and then there's the administrative work involved. So for me, that's about a 35 hour work week. So 20 clients, really technically 18 to 20 clients is about a 35 hour work week. Now, if I only have 10 clients, that's only 10-ish hours of massage. I have a lot of other time in my work hours to build my business. What happens with independent massage therapists, business owners, is that instead of filling that air quoting work time with work, we fill it with uh picking up the kid early from daycare, which is awesome, by the way. I'm not saying you shouldn't do that. But we tend to fill it with things that are not work-related. Uh, you notice, you know, you don't go into the office, so you stay home that day because you don't have any clients. And instead of doing, like, actual administrative and marketing work for your business, you, like, realize kids are at school. This is a good time to wash the floor and get the laundry done and get ahead on meal prep and da 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 All valid things not things that are going to put more clients on your schedule. So I would like to suggest that if your goal is 15 clients, which maybe is 25 hours of work a week, that you spend 25 hours of work a week working on your business within those office hours that you have scheduled to be in your business. And if that means that you, even though you don't have any clients, you have to get into your car and drive 20 minutes to your office and sit down at your massage table and, you know, which you should have clients on, had you done all this marketing work three weeks ago, um, sit at your massage table and get your marketing work done, then that's what you got to do. Some people need that level of structure. Sometimes I need that level of structure. It really depends on the day and the situation and the task at hand. But if you have caught yourself looking at a schedule and seeing that it's empty and then going and uh, doing some grocery shopping and making pies for the weekend, this would be a good time to rethink that. And it might be a good time to, if you resist structure, loosely sketch out a couple hours in your schedule for the rest of the week and loosely sketch out a couple of tasks uh, that you could do and fit those things in and do them instead of doing non-business things. So, I have suggested that you do a bunch of things to reach out to previous clients, right? Uh, email, call, text them, whatever. Send a bulk email or text. Post on social. Those are all uh, retention um, and reminder techniques to clients who don't book regularly or who used to book regularly but fell off for some reason. Now, what else can you do outside of that to get new clients if that's a goal of yours? In this time that you have carved out for your business that you're truly going to use for your business, schedule a couple of conversations with referral partners. Bring a plant to the new whatever business down the street. Introduce yourself. So this might mean reconnecting with old referral partners that you haven't talked to in three years. Um, it might just mean dropping a text to someone to say, hey, I hope you're doing well. Do you want to have coffee soon? Or, hey, I've been watching your business for a while and it looks really great and I'd love to have a conversation with you. May I swing by at some point? What's a good time for you? It's also a good time to look for local networking events. So this could mean looking at networking groups and small business owner kind of groups in your area. It could mean asking to visit a few BNI meetings. Um, different BNI groups in your area. It could mean, I'm not saying that you need to dump hundreds of dollars into joining a networking group because you have three slow weeks on your schedule. What I'm saying is now is a good time, since you have the time, to investigate um, and perhaps commit to an event, one thing. Um, or create your own. Like just 
decide that you miss a few of your massage or PT or whatever friends and say, hey, I want to get together. How about 45 minutes on Thursday morning? I'll have a box of coffee here. Like whatever it takes to connect with a few people outside of your business, outside of your current client base to just have a conversation, you know, to remind people you exist and to be reminded that other referral partners and healthcare providers and whatever small business owners exist. That can be really, God help me for using this word, it can be really nourishing. Like it can, it can make you feel less alone and therefore more likely to be motivated um, to actually execute the tasks that you know you need to execute. That is what I have. I am done. What do you think, Michael? Love it. Thank you. I always ask people if they're having trouble, like, hey, do you have more money or more time right now? If you have more time, use the time. So I love that framing. Thank you. Yeah, because really you're time rich and cash poor at this point. Right. Okay, that's all done. You already knew those things, but I hope the reminder of them in one happy space uh, has been helpful. What's next? And I did, uh, before we move on, I did pop in the uh, link to episode 418, which is how to recession-proof your massage business since you referenced it. So in the comments on the social media version of this podcast, it is there. But if you're listening, which is most of you, um, look for episode 418. That is the uh, recession-proof episode. All right, next. And last, let's talk about our sponsor, Happy Face. I love talking about Happy Face because of the heart-shaped design. It's just lovely. It is indeed an innovative heart-shaped design. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, face cradles can be super uncomfortable. You can change that. Happy Face is the most comfy face cradle. It totally, it's just, it's so cozy. It's just so cozy. I laid in my massage table the other day face down because I wanted to see how dirty the floor was under my massage table. And um, it was really comfortable. No, no sinus pressure, no eye pressure. You don't need to adjust it mid-massage. No wrinkles, no makeup smearing. It is seamless. This is actually my favorite feature. It's seamless, so it's super easy to clean. I can spray my cleaner on it, let it dwell, and then wipe it down. And it's super easy. And I don't have to like scrub in some weird stitching. It's just fantastic. It's about the same dimensions as other massage face cradles. So your face cradle covers are going to fit. Um, it's also going to fit on your massage table or massage chair face cradle frame. The whole back is Velcroed. So it's super easy. It's going to stay where you put it. You, because you're a listener, can get 10% off your entire purchase at massagebusinessblueprint.com slash happy face. Use code massage BB at checkout. But all of that is written when you land on massagebusinessblueprint.com slash happy face. And before we move on to quick tips, uh, Marcy is stopping by on Facebook. Good morning, Marcy. And Marcy says, I'm looking forward to a local networking event next week at a neighborhood barbecue restaurant. It's a networking and action group. And I'll report back next week at how it went. Awesome. We'd love to hear about that, Marcy. I'd like to hear what you get from the barbecue. That too. Priorities. All right. Quick tips. You got anything or should I jump in? Jump in because I don't have Jack for you this morning. <laughs> All right. So uh, Alyssa knew about this already, but I discovered this um, just this morning, actually. So there is a program called the Affordable Connectivity Program, and it provides free internet or at least um, free up to a point of a dollar amount internet access uh, to lower income households. So um, I'm guessing some people don't know about this and uh, many that may be eligible may not be aware of it. So um, there's lots of different eligibility requirements. I, I, I made that sound wrong. There's lots of ways to be eligible is what I meant to say. So one of them is uh, if your household income is at or below 200% of the federal poverty guidelines, or if a member of your household meets one of the list of criteria, which includes things like uh, receiving Medicaid, SNAP, uh, public housing, other so sources of aid. So there's a lot of uh, ways to qualify for this. So if you're not aware of it and you or someone you know qualifies, it may be worth looking into this. And again, it's called the Affordable Connectivity Program, uh, provides internet access, and the link is in the show notes. This is episode 437. That's my quick tip. It's a really good quick tip. Um, I heard about this program a while back, um, and there are a lot more people eligible than realized. So it's yeah. worth checking it out. And the internet, that's um, great because the internet is something we all absolutely need to function in society. So yeah. And um, I apologize if you said this already, but it actually can also apply to cell phone benefits 
Did you, did you I did say, not that? say that? Thank you. No, I did not. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. So um, it's not just about internet. It's also um, could get you like 50 bucks off a year or 25 bucks off of your cell phone provider. So, um, and actually most cell phone providers told their uh, customers about this a while back. That's how I heard about it. I got a little text from Cricket that was like, hey, there's this new program. See if you qualify um, that they just sent to everybody. So uh, it is, you could actually get $30 towards internet service and $25 towards sell. Um, so keep that in mind. Awesome. And you can apply online. The link in the show notes leads you to the application page. Okay. Well, uh, are we good for today? We're done? We are done, man. I'm tired. All right. Let's do it. Well, hey, everyone. We're glad oh, wait. you joined us. Go. Oh, no, yep. I'm sorry. I thought yep. we had a new comment that we hadn't read, but I was just slow. You're fine. Keep going. No, okay. Thanks for glad listening, you. people. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening, people. We're glad you're here. You can find us, as always, on the web at massagebusinessblueprint.com. Um, many of you have signed up to be part of our Blueprint Mastermind community, which is uh, very affordable, and we've been told it's very high value. Uh, we have regular office hours every month where we help you with challenges in your business. We have resources. We have peer mentoring through the online forums. Uh, we have cl courses you can take that are CE approved, all sorts of stuff inside the community. There's a 30 day free trial. So if you're not a member yet, go to massagebusinessblueprint.com, click on community and you can join for 30 days for free. Check us out, see if you like us. And if you do, you're welcome to stick around. All right, with that, you can email us at podcast at massagebusinessblueprint.com if you have topics or questions you'd like us to bring up on the show. And that's it for today. Have a great day. We will see you next time. Bye.